Shimon. Saturday, August 19th will be lit at the Blessing Center Lusaka as the Agape Glory Encounter host Pastor Victoria Orenze, Ephraim Son of Africa and Chosen Generation with Chile Music Deborah Mambo and Temwani. Grab your tickets from Compute Tickets in all ShopRite locations and online from BGS Tickety by sending a hello via WhatsApp to plus two six zero seven five zero five six zero 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 zero. Tickets are two hundred quarter standard access and five hundred quarter for platinum access. The Edge brought to you by Tehila Media and Agape Ministries in partnership with Son of Africa Foundation. Good afternoon. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Labor Matters. I'm your host, Daisy Mukukamlinga. Um, I look forward to today's conversation because the feedback that the public has been giving us clearly is an indication that we are doing something right and people have brought in different comments, different contributions, but most importantly, different questions that are being answered. Yes. Now, as you know, Labor Matters is that show that comes to you every Sunday to answer any type of question that you may have regarding your work, regarding your job. If you don't understand what a salary is, if you don't understand employment as a whole, Labor Matters is the show that you have to watch. Now, as always, as always, I don't dissect today's topic alone. I always have an expert in this field who's a leadership advisor as well as management advisor, Mr. Owen Kalanda. Good afternoon. Sir. Good afternoon, Daisy. You're Hello. welcome again. Thank you so much. All right. Now, I, I already know we, we, have, we have to brace ourselves for more tough questions <laughs> from the public. Um, yeah. About last week, we had little time. Okay, I feel like we have enough time, but we have too many questions from the people, That's right? Um, maybe just to touch on that, are you able to give a feedback based on the questions that came through even after the show? was done before we get into today's conversation. Thank you so much, uh, Desi. Uh, so in terms of the questions, yeah, it's really, it's really been uh, very good. And um, mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate everyone who has been following the program, also giving us uh, feedback. Uh, so there were a number of questions that were raised. Some of them were on the topics that we had already covered. Mm -hmm. Others were on new things. Um, some of the questions were really more around the salaries. Uh, yeah. We had also questions around, um, I'll start with the ones that were on, on, on probation, where some people are still asking, can somebody be on um, uh, probation for one year? Uh, like we have said before, uh, probation is for three months, and uh, when the employer makes an assessment and in, uh, desires to extend, that uh, extension should be communicated to the employee uh, before at the expiry of those three months. And then the extension can only be for another three months maximum. Uh, there were questions around uh, some people who have not gotten their gratuities after they left employment and they're asking um, what has to be done. Really, it's a requirement that the employee is paid their terminal benefits when their employment comes to an end, uh, depending on what they were entitled to according to the contract, the type of contract they signed. Uh, so for such, uh, it's a matter of following up with the, with the employers. Uh, we had questions on salaries again and so on. So uh, we had over 40 questions, that, I mean 20 questions, sorry, that we had not tackled last week. And uh, I, I must mention that all these questions have been compiled. Uh, and they were also delivered to the relevant authorities so that they look into those matters. So um, I've been given assurance that they will be caught and we, we are continuing <coughs> to discuss with the relevant authorities 
who are following up. There are also those questions around uh, people working for long hours mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So all those things, uh, the Ministry of Labor is uh, made aware and mm -hmm. they are looking into. Great. I think for me the cherry on top is the fact that despite the massive response that you are getting from the public, you're still able to take interest in even handing over these issues to authorities that may be. Yeah. yeah. So today's conversation again is bordering around salaries because we didn't have enough time to dissect everything in line with salaries. Also because of the kind of feedback that you brought to us. Now today's topic is um, salaries and benefits. Last week we, we pretty much dissected what a salary is. We, we pretty much just talked about the breakdown of a salary and with the kind of feedback that we got clearly you now understand what your salary entails so today we're taking it a step further by understanding what benefits comes along with a salary if you want to take part in this um, show today you may use the number that is shown on your screen we are only accommodating sms's as usual and we'll be able to tackle as many as we can those that we won't be able to tackle like mr kalanda has assured you they'll certainly be looked into. So moving on, Mr. Kavanda, maybe we already explained what a salary is, but as a way of forging ahead, can you explain more on the hours of work and how they relate to a salary for an employee? Okay, no, thank you so much. Um, so if you look at uh, really the kind of questions that people uh, were sending, um, you can clearly see that there is a challenge in understanding really how many hours that, like a person could, could, could work, mm -hmm. what their salary could be like. Uh, so it's important, uh, maybe we, at this point, we'll, we'll try to talk about these matters uh, both from the employee's perspective and the employer's perspective uh, so that um, there is clear understanding. So when, we'll, let's start with the employers and the human resource practitioners uh, more especially, uh, because as you know, they are the ones running uh, HR uh, matters and also their supervisors. It's important to understand that before the employee comes in, there is work which is actually done mm -hmm. and that work involves setting up the company. So during that process, what exactly happens uh, is that the company will, will or business owner, if you are a small business, they will, they will sit down and start looking at what exactly should they pay an employee. So they start determining the salaries in advance before even the recruitment happens. Uh, the employer also comes up with the conditions of service, what do they pay and so on. So it is at that time that it's important that employers and HR practitioners, they really understand what they are going to apply. Uh, we've been in different companies and one of the things that we see is that HR, for instance, they simply print a contract that could have been there in 1965 and they don't change anything. The laws might be changing, but the contracts or the conditions of service have not been updated. Yeah. And now that starts to create problems. And um, when it comes to the salaries, it's also important to understand that when the employer is, is planning for salaries, they have to understand which, which option or which model are they going to use. Uh, there are two different models that are used. One is where the employer does not set the salary structure. So what happens is that the employee, when the employee comes in, depending on how the employee negotiates, that's, that's how much salary they're given. The other model is where the employer already has a salary structure. That means you have grade one, grade two, grade three, all the way, and the salaries are already set. So when the person comes in, the employees pay the salary according to the grade. Now, each one of these have their own advantages and disadvantages, and, and it's important that there is a clear understanding of these things because they are the things that are leading to some of the complaints around salaries. Uh, when you use a model that is based on negotiation and there is no salary structure set, what that means is that for the employer, it helps them to hire anybody that they so wish, depending on how much uh, is negotiated in terms of salaries. So it, it provides some room of uh, you know flexibility uh, the challenge with that is that in as much as salaries are supposed to be confidential unfortunately it's practical ask any hr person out there at some point people start to discuss salaries someone will tell me maybe they are drinking with their friends mm -hmm. someone will talk about their salary and you find that this officer here is getting let's say three thousand as an example 
And then he hears that his friend gets 7,000. What that starts to do now is the person will say, wait a minute, we are doing almost the same kind of work. Why is this one getting more money? So that in itself starts to, to create feelings of uh, uh, dissatisfaction and eventually the people might even pull, pull back. So it's important to understand that that model is good, but it has also its own limitation. The other model which is uh, widely used is one where now salaries are set and there is a salary structure. Um, when you look at uh, in Zambia, for instance, we have the Employment Code uh, Act number 3 of 2019. When you go to section 5, subsection 4, it is clear there that you pay uh, equal pay for equal work, in other words. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that if you have officers at the same level, pay them salaries that uh, demonstrate that this is work of equal value. Now, when you are creating, that comes about with the job evaluations. And it's important we are explaining these things because when businesses are, setting, are being set up, it's important that these things are considered. So that when you have these salary grades, which usually comes from what we call job evaluation, with those salary grades set, you also have the entrance requirements, the minimum qualification and experience, so you might have your grade 12, your certificate, your diploma, your degree, master's, it keeps on going like that. And the salaries are set like that. So what that then means, it helps uh, with the employer having salaries that are according to each grade. So when the people actually start working, then it's, you have paid the salary according to the grade in which you have come. So how does this now uh, help the HR practitioners and employers. It's important to understand that when you, when you set up these models, it then helps you to now know what should you include in the, in the contract. Because at the time that the person is coming in, you should already know what you are using so that you can explain to the, to, the, to the people who are coming in. And then when it comes to work, apart from what we have talked about, the work itself, what are you going to be paying for? It's important, and we want to spend a bit of time explaining to the employers because some of the problems, as we have said, they are coming because we are mixing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. If you have said you are going to pay uh, for what the person has done, it's different from paying for the time. And we are going to explain what that means. In some, in some circumstances, you can have an agreement with an employee that if you move these X things or you do X, Y, Z, you get your two five or your three thousand as an example. Now that is not tied to time; it is tied to the person delivering on, on the assignment. In another circumstance, you can tie your payment to time. What that means is that you say you work for uh, eight hours or you work for X amount of uh, hours in a month, and you get this salary. So, when you are developing the contracts, going back to what we are talking about in terms of employers ensuring that they have thought everything through, it means that your contracts should be very clear on what you are going to measure the person on and what you are going to pay for. Uh, if the person you agreed that they are going to dig 15 holes and the person finishes by the 15th, you have to pay. You cannot come and say, no, no, wait until the 30th. <laughs> no, but the person has finished. So why, why should they wait for the, for the 30th? Mm -hmm. If you are paying them for the, for the time, and remember, uh, in Zambia, and in many cases, you have these, um, uh, even the payroll systems or the ERP system, most of, it, most of those, they are configured on time. And the laws also recognize time. So we have another time when we talk about what you do with employee performance management. Because the laws are based on time, of course, there's also an aspect of productivity. It means that as employers, you need to be mindful of now how you manage the time. We, you ask the question around what's now the relationship between the salaries and time, because there are, there are all those questions around people saying they're working for long hours uh, with little salaries and so on. It means when the person is coming in and you know that your system is based on time, you then have to make sure that that time that the employee is going to work is well thought through, that's why as management and HR practitioners and supervisors, there is need to sit down and look at when will the employee start work, when will the employee stop work. Because when you go to, uh, to the provisions of the law 
under section uh, 74 and 75 of the employment code. You will see there that there's a provision on how much time the employee can work. And in the law, it's very clear that the employee will work in a day for eight hours. Okay? And in a week, the employee will work for 48 hours. So where is this 48 hours coming from? You know, there have also been these questions. If you take, let's say, let's say your work starts from Monday, Monday to Friday. So you take Monday to Friday, that's five days. Five times the eight hours, that gives you 40 hours. If you are working also on Saturday up to 13 hours, so again, 8 to 13, that gives you five, days, five hours, sorry. That now gives you 45 hours in that week. Mm -hmm. If you are working on Saturday also up to 17 hours, that now gives you the additional three, three hours in the afternoon. You, you calculate everything, it gives you your 48 hours. Now, 48 hours is the maximum that has been provided for in the law. In other companies or in other businesses, the business can say you'll be working Monday to Saturday, 13, that means 45 hours. Or they simply put that you'll be doing 40 hours. So whatever the hours of work have been set up, and that's why I said it's important for the company or the business owner or the HR to, to work out the, 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 the schedule of work for the employees in advance because you need to calculate how many hours the employee is going to do so that you are not making employees to work over and above the required hours of work. So when that is done, you now find that when the person is being given a contract, you should then make it clear that in here, in this company, you are going to work for X amount of hours. And the employee will be paid for those hours that they are going to work. And now, if you work from Monday to Friday, or you work um, for 45 hours, and you do more work than 45 hours for that week, or you do more work than 48 hours, depending on the contract. And it's important to understand, this is why I said, and, and we encourage business owners to make sure that when they are coming up with the conditions of service, and they are coming up with contracts, if they're having a challenge doing it themselves, they are better off going to their lawyers to help them to craft contracts in a manner that is within the confines of the law. Or they can go to, um, uh, human resource consultants or labor consultants who know what they are doing and then the consultant can now uh, help them to now come up with contracts that balances the needs of the employer but also um, the employees but in line with the laws. So that's the importance of looking at the, the hours of work. So in the contract, if the contract says 45 hours, if the person does more than 45 hours, the employee will now be entitled to overtime. Mm -hmm. If the contract says 48 hours, and the employee works for more than 48 hours in a week, that employee will be entitled to overtime, which is calculated at uh, one and a half of the, uh, using the rate on the basic pay. Again, for the details, that is something that people can go to their consultants uh, or their accountants or HR practitioners to sit down and work out what is normal overtime. And there's also overtime, uh, the double hourly rate, which is uh, paid if someone works on a public holiday. But again, even for people who are working on public holidays, the law again provides for other, other things. You have to see how the contract was crafted. So it's important that all these things, both the employees and the employers, understand that the way uh, the contracts are set up, the way the hours of work are set up, it's important that they are within the law. And when the employee is going to do over and above those minimum hours of work, then the employee can now be paid overtime. Now, uh, in some companies you find that they don't pay overtime. What they can do is to give what is called compensatory time off. <coughs> what that means is that the employer will allow, can, you can as an employee work overtime, but then if, when that time accumulates to a certain number of hours, maybe even to, to be equivalent to a day, the employee is then allowed to take that day off. But that day is not been deducted from their accrued leave days. Because now the, the, the employer is, is, is basically saying instead of paying a salary uh, that overtime, they are allowing you to go and rest. But again, this goes back to what we talked about in terms of how have you set up your conditions of service. And the management in that company, do they actually understand what has been set up? Uh, because sometimes you find that uh, managers or supervisors 
they are going to the east while the conditions of service are on the other side. So it's important that everybody understands what is provided for in that company and where the employee might have to work for uh, more than the 48 hours. There has also been some kind of, and again, this is now for the employers and HR practitioners. It, over time, it needs also to be approved. You cannot just have people, maybe they were just relaxing the whole time. Then when it is time to knock off, that's when now everybody's become so busy. Uh, because they know, of course, some people want to get um, some more money. No one wants the <laughs> less money. So if there's some way to make more money through over time, why not? So, but again, that, that, because that becomes an extra cost to the company, it means there has to be some kind of thought applied to it. The company needs to think through, um, should these people actually work over time? Or please allow the people to go and rest and maybe they will become more, more uh, efficient when they, they report the next day. So it's important that both employers and employees understand what will apply in terms of overtime and how that affects the salaries. And as we said, sometimes yes, where salaries uh, are being paid and there's overtime, the salary of course will go up uh, in that month when overtime is being paid. Clearly the issues to do with salaries is a sensitive topic, yeah? Because yeah. we all have different experiences in yeah. line with salaries. A few questions have come in and also just a caution to, to our viewers. We are not receiving calls. The only thing we can attend to are text messages. So in case you have any burning question or if you need to contribute anything to, to what we're talking about, kindly use the number on the screen, but use a text message. Don't call because we won't pick up, but we will respond to the messages. Speaking of responding, um, Mioba has sent through a message and well, he's just saying he's enjoying the program and he would also want to know what the minimum wage currently is. Um, and then we also have another message. Good afternoon, I'm following the program, very interesting. My question is the issue of minimum wage. Why has it gone silent? What is happening? He says McDonald's Cafe. Do we have McDonald's in Cafe? We do? <laughs> Not at the company. Huh? <laughs> Maybe as a name, yes. Oh, as a name, yeah, I wanted to get surprised. I'm like, do you have McDonald's in Zambia and they don't know about it? Because <laughs> he spelled it the way McDonald's spells it. Yeah, yeah the, okay. Uh, then, then, last one I'll read, then we forge ahead with the conversation. Um, Abrams from Christon, I don't know if this was supposed to be Cheston, he says, is it in order for an employee to be paid leave, pay alone, at separation after having worked for six, for six years, the employer states there is no other payment kindly guide. Let me just read that again for you to understand it. Is it in order for an employee to be paid leave pay alone at separation after having worked for six years, the employer states there is no other payment kindly guide? Mm. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to the... Um the amount of money to be paid and what type of money needs to be paid at the time of separation, uh, that is dependent on the contract. That was, and this is why I, I kept on saying it's important that contracts are made in line with the law. Mm -hmm. uh, they, um, you see, on the market, some of the things that happen, you start a company, you have a friend who also has a company, and they give you a template of a so-called contract template, and you are running with it, now you don't even know where that template came from, how you, maybe it was from a big company or a small company. Uh, sometimes people have friends who believe they can just download a, a template for a contract and it shouldn't be like that. Uh, it's important that employers, and, and, and we're emphasizing this to HR practitioners, sit down and make sure that the contract that you have, or if you're a business owner, you have a contract that is in line with the current labor laws mm -hmm. okay um, because some of the things and the complaints that come really from uh, uh, employees it's a matter of certain things not having been done in line with the law uh, so uh, for the payments that need to be made at the end of uh, uh, of one's employment that will depend on the type of contract that they signed and that's why because we don't have access to that a contract for now, we cannot go into the details of what it is that they should mm -hmm. have been entitled to. 
Um, however, <coughs> it's important to understand, for instance, that if someone is uh, has signed a long-term contract, and the long-term contract is a contract which is uh, over and above 12 months, so we are talking of two years, three years, five years, six years contract, that type of contract, the person will be entitled to gratuity at 25% of the basic pay. So uh, it will be prorated when, when paid based on the, the salary that the person was getting. So if for people like that who might have such kind of challenges, again, you have the Ministry of Labor. That's why they're there. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of the person going there, they will find the um, appropriate officers to assist them, and then they can look into um, those matters and to see how best they can be helped. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the, the hot minimum wage, I know this topic keeps on coming up. <laughs> <but> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So in terms of the minimum wage, um, to help uh, the people to understand, again, the minimum wage, like I said last time, what can be done, and this you can go on the internet, download the minimum wages uh, for, look at the statutory instruments for 2011, okay? There is 2011, it gives the minimum wage and conditions. Then, in terms of the latest, the rates, they can look at uh, the minimum wages the statutory instruments which were issued in 2018. Okay, now um, there was some announcement that the, the minimum wages were going to be increased uh, this year, and uh, I know that brought a lot of uh, excitement on the labor market. Uh, that one we have not yet received the statutory instruments. So uh, that, in terms of uh, where we are with that, that will be the question for for the ministry. Mm -hmm. um, but when everything is done, there will be uh, a statutory instrument issued, and that is now what guides uh, in terms of the new minimum wages to be applied. Uh, so there are rates, there was a statement that was issued, and it's, it's available even on the internet. So in terms of what the rates that uh, are indicated there, someone can read. I will not mention them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and just to add on, I think we did tackle minimum wage in our first two exactly. episodes yeah. yeah i think so so maybe they can they, they can either scroll through the kbn tv page and check out some of our first few episodes almost every week we're touching on the, <laughs> the minimum wage <laughs> but moving on uh, considering how sensitive the nature of salaries is um what would be your advice as 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 an expert at advising leaderships and management, what would you advise employers and HRs when coming up with their payrolls as well as salaries? So, yeah, uh, clearly, as, as you've seen uh, in the uh, various episodes we have had, the big issue around salaries, as I mentioned, it keeps on popping up. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to, for instance, I think Section 72 of the Employment Code, in there, there is a provision that, as, as an employer, you need to explain the wages or the salaries and conditions of service yeah. to the employee. This is a starting point. Um, when employees are coming, remember we said before even this employee comes, the employer would have sat down yeah. and worked out, and again, there will be another topic that will come at a later stage when we start looking at uh, uh, labor planning as well as the uh, labor costing. What that means is that you, uh, the employer needs to sit down and say, for this position, how much will I pay? Then you load now the cost of the salary, the NAPSA, NIMA, workers' compensation, uh, skills levy, gratuity and leave days and all those. You add all those things together and any other payment you're going to make to the person, that gives you a total uh, cost to the employer. So the employer needs to sit down and make those plans in, way in advance. They, they should already calculate how much am I spending on employee A, employee B, employee C, and so on. So that the employer knows what their monthly cost will be, as well as what their annual cost will be like. So that you're even making proper plans. You cannot say I'm, I'm running a, a, a business that is successful, yet you don't know how much you're going to spend. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this happens a lot of times with uh, especially businesses where you get so excited. Uh, sometimes you have some business that come in or you have some money and you're just now employing. Mm -hmm. And you don't even take time to think how sustainable is this. So, yeah. 
so from the HR perspective and the employers, and this is the thing we keep on emphasizing, if the employer has a challenge doing these kind of things, they can go to consultants who should sit down with them and work out their labor cost. Uh, so that when you have set out your conditions, you know what you will pay, then when the employee comes, you fulfill that requirement of the law, of explaining to them. If they are well educated, maybe you just give them the contracts and the conditions they will read on their own. If they are having a challenge, it's a, it's a requirement that you sit down with them, help them to understand. Because some of the problems that uh, people have been raising, it's, 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 a, it's an awareness issue where the employer has not made things very clear. So at the very beginning when the employee is coming into the company, it's important to sit down with them, make things clear to them. These are the hours of work. So you start work on such and such a day. Uh, here you work from this period to that period, which should be within the law. For this, when you work from this period to that period, for this period, you are going to get paid this much. These will be the deductions. So if you are paying 2,000, you are paying 3,500, you are paying 50,000, depending. How much is going for this? How much are the NAPSA, NIMA? So that the person at the end of the day, they understand, okay, I'm, I'm walking away with this much. Especially, uh, for instance, the, the colleagues who deal with people who are employees, who, for instance, in agriculture or in some businesses where the salaries uh, might, re might be relatively low. You need to spend time so that they understand. Because for them, if they don't understand, then they'll start saying, you have stolen. That's where the problem comes in. So it's important that the HR, uh, you take time to make the people understand. That's number one. Number two, because the, payroll, the payrolls are sensitive, you need to collect all the necessary information that will, uh, will relate to the payroll inputs. So what this means is, is this. At the very beginning, when the person is coming, and here we will talk to... Uh, both the employees and the employer. For the employees, when you're starting work, when they're asking you to bring your NRC, uh, bring your bank account, mm -hmm. please take those things. Because it, the, at the end of the day, the employer needs those things to process your payment. Uh, some of the complaints we hear from employees, no, no, for me, the, the salary is delayed. Uh, but maybe you gave a wrong bank account. You know, the, or <laughs> The things, you know, I have not received an answer. Maybe you have not been registered. So on the part of the employee, it's important that employees take time to submit everything that the employer has asked them. Some people will say, no, but when I was applying, I already gave you those papers. In some companies, they, are, they have these recruitment files. Once the recruitment just finishes, they will lock away those files. And at the time of engagement, the employee has to give uh, and the, the HR will photocopy. But depending on what goes on in that particular company. Yeah. So from the, HR, from the employee side, submit everything. From the HR side, uh, those who are doing HR or the business owners, it's important to make sure that when the person is coming, they submit to you everything. In Zambia, you are required, for instance, to register them for NAPSA. So what is needed there will be the NRC. For those who have, if you have employees who have worked before, it becomes a little bit easy. Uh, but if they have not worked be before, then you have to register them on NAPSA. Uh, we are now hearing because of, the, I, I keep on uh, talking about this partial uh, withdrawal now. Where, hey, so you, even you saw from some of the messages, as we have not received any partial, our employer was not uh, remitting, or oh, I found my name is not even on the system. It's important from the HR side that when the employee comes in, First thing, register them on NAPSA. You need a clear uh, photocopy of the NRC. They have their own processes. It's online. Mm -hmm. Nothing complicated. You register them for NIM and all the other things that are required. Um, do you get the employee's bank account. You put them in the system. If you have a system. If you don't have you're a small business, it's still fine. Um, after that, you then also have to ensure that once you collect those information that you need, then there is now the payroll input the contract uh, and everything you now give to finance if you have uh, the accounting department. If you don't have HR can still do that or whoever is responsible for that, they need to look at the, that documentation because it is, it's the document that gives an instruction. And these are things that even when auditors come, for those who are working in companies where they get to be audited, the auditors will see what, was, what documentation was here to introduce this person to the payroll. 
Because you find sometimes just, you just, hey, this month uh, Jane has come, we pay them. Mm -hmm. They are being paid based on what? Yeah. So there has to be documentation that uh, introduces this person to the payroll. Now when uh, all that is done, depending on your setup, if you have a bigger company, you have HR, you have finance, and um, HR will submit to finance, they do the input. Whoever is responsible for, for now uh, calculating the salaries, they have to make sure that they do a proper job correctly. Because remember, if the employee gets paid less, it becomes a problem. If the employee gets paid more than they needed to, again, it's a problem. You are inconveniencing that employee because now you have to follow them up to pay back and all that. You don't need that. So the payroll inputs for a particular month need to be done correctly. And that's why we also said documentation becomes important. If the people are working based on hours, remember there has to be a register. Did this person report? If the person didn't report, why should they be paid? Is there a sick note to support their absence? Because by law, if the person was sick, they give you a sick note. If they are on a long-term contract, they are entitled to three months uh, of pay, um, and uh, full pay, and another three months on half pay. If they are on a short-term contract, which is up to 12 months, they, have, they are entitled to 26 days. So uh, on full pay and 26 days on half pay. So it's important that the person running the payroll has all the documentation that is required, uh, so that you do not miss a person. Both the new ones and the old ones, you, you, com you compute and check that everything is okay. Once all that is checked, then you need to now do a verification. You make sure that the deductions have been done properly because some of the concerns from employees, basically they, it's where deductions have been made more than that they, they should. So we talked in the last, in the other episode where we talked about statutory deductions, your NAPSA, your NIMA, uh, and the pay as UN and so on. Those are statutory. You have also other deductions that are allowable under the law. So the one who is doing the payroll needs to make sure that all these things have been done properly. If you can have a, a payroll system, it's even better. It helps, it helps the company. But if you don't have, and you're using your Excel, whatever it is you're you are, you are using, or just a book because you have just two, three employees, just make sure that everything is done properly. Once you make those deductions, you will now put even the contribution together. Um, so the employee gets to be paid their salary, now, remember I talked about the time you are recruiting. They, you needed to have gotten, for instance, the bank account. So you're now just paying and making sure that you now keep a record of proof of these correct payments. If the person was to be paid 2,000, you have paid 2,000. If they were to be paid 50,000, you have paid 50,000. That is what is very key. Um, and <coughs> then you keep those records. There will be also a time that you are now uh, dealing with any payroll Queries. This is where, for instance, an employee comes, look, I didn't get paid, or I was omitted, or remember, um, sometimes the, you just have someone, maybe they started midway. So there are all these things that may happen. So the people who are dealing with a payroll, if it is accounting side or it's, it's HR, you need to be in a space where you should be able to understand and deal with employees. If the employee comes, they have a problem. Usually, the advice is that that concern should be raised with HR for bigger companies who have finance and HR. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the employee raises that issue with the HR, and then sometimes it has to be put in writing because now HR then gives a further instruction to finance. But if you are a small company, a small business, again, the employee could come to you. You simply sit down with them, oh, why, what is the problem? You, you go through those things to make sure that you resolve uh, they, are, they are payroll queries. If it means you, are, you underpaid them, maybe try to make sure that you pay them as quickly as, uh, as possible. Um, we also advise that you should be able to have some proof of payment. If you can have a pay slip, I know that um, sometimes it becomes a big challenge to have pay slips. Sometimes people make those things even just from Excel. Others, they, you, are, you are going to have a payroll system. Whatever it is, as a business, you need to keep a record of what you have paid. Because at some point, the employee comes out and says, I wasn't getting paid. The employee will make a claim. It is now the responsibility of the employer to prove that indeed they were paying. And this, especially for, for, for small businesses, you find that it's month end, the employee comes, you know, going to the pocket 
Oh, how much? Oh, 2,000. Okay, here. Yeah. The other month, ah, hey, Jane, take from the drawer, pay the, pay the guys. No record whatsoever of whatever is being paid. Sometimes it works if, if you are trying to achieve other things. But what we normally advise is that please ensure that there is a record of your payment. Even if you don't have a payroll system, at least just take even a book where the people are signing to say, I've gotten paid my 2,000 this month, or my 2,500, or 3,000. Just somewhere where you have a record of those payments. It's very, very important. Uh, but as we always advise, if you can have a payroll system, it's even better, it makes life easy. So once all those things are done, you have answered any queries from the employees, and it's just about having these conversations with employees, because some of the questions that come are because there was no proper communication with employees. Then keep your, your documents. Remember in Zambia there are laws that provide for how long you should actually keep your payroll information. Uh, so again, it's important to understand those aspects because when auditors come or Minister of Labor comes or the employee takes you to court and then you say, no, we can't find the, the documents. No, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those things need to be there um, in line with the provisions of the law. Mm. Very well explained and I keep emphasizing every time we're running out of time, that's when more and more concerns get to come. So let me read a few before we close off the show. Hello, I'm enjoying the show. Thank you. My question is, why is it that people are being paid when they are having a new holiday? And then, or oh, others, you, you sort them out once the show is <laughs> done because there are many. Uh, good afternoon to you. This is very interesting. We really need such topics. Thank you so much for watching and please do tune in every Sunday. We'll be having interesting conversations regarding the kind of job that you do. We have another one here from Dube in Kitwe. He says, my question is, how do you go about with companies that refuse contracts and what is the normal working hours? I think we have touched that. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, good afternoon, sir. But please clarify on the minimum wage between ministers who, are, who get paid more than 60,000 kwacha, for example, directors, teachers, nurses, police. Um, I'm just giving you ideas <laughs> of the messages that are coming in. Good afternoon, and I'm following the program, and my question is, if the company is, what happens if a company does not have a union? Okay, let me read the last two. I have a situation where I reported my case to labor over my benefits and leave days. I was told to wait for a call, and that call has never come forth. What can I do? Uh, let's see the last message. Both me, I work for, I've worked for five years in the mine, and the, and the amount came out. 16,300, but they have just given me 3,000 just for leave days. What can I do? Oh, there's so many issues surrounding Ish. employment. I'm tempted to read the last two. Afternoon, the issue of benefits. Is it mandatory that if you lose work in a wrong way, for instance, in the mines where someone is found with alcohol in the blood, should lose both work and benefits? Should they lose both work? and benefits okay so let me read the last one i promise you <laughs> <laughs> please help us from yeah. g4s security firm because company from the time minimum wage was introduced this company has never met the minimum wage at the same time there is no fixed salary you can get this month 1000 the next month 1100 and the next month 900 Watcha. Now, more messages are coming in and coming in, yeah. but that's just an idea of questions that have come through. Now, we're now dying minutes, and I'm tempted to ask on the types of benefits that should be talked about. Um, I would have loved us to touch on the issue of employee benefits, but maybe you can just highlight some of those benefits. Okay, uh, clearly in the interest of time. Um, and probably in the next episodes, we'll try and uh, spend more time uh, in terms of what kind of benefits mm -hmm. the law provides. Um, there are a lot of benefits that the law has provided, uh, which depending on the, if you're in employment, you can benefit from as an employee. Uh, for instance, if you're hired in a particular place, 
they take you to another place, there is an aspect of you being repatriated, uh, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. there, is, uh, there are benefits which relate to uh, leave. There are so many different types of leave that uh, the, uh, the law now has provided for. Uh, you talking of uh, annual leave, uh, where you an employee to answer one of those questions: Why should an employee be paid when they are when they are not working? I actually, also <laughs> don't understand that aspect. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so what happens is that uh, we we will, we will have a, a, a deeper conversation around it in terms mm -hmm. of how it works. Uh, but key to it, in, and in summary, is that remember every month the law provides that you have two leave days. So those two leave days. The, the law is basically allowing you as an employee to go and rest, but at the same time, we remember we talked about our, uh, the normal hours of work, mm -hmm. which translate into a day. So what it means is that because the law has given you two leave days paid off, so because you are supposed to be paid, it's either you go on leave, you rest, or the employer will who pay for those days. So when you're away and you filled in your leave form, you're basically utilizing those leave dates. It's, it's, you, are, you are exchanging uh, in, in monetary form. Hence, the employer will still pay you even when you're away for those mm -hmm. two leave days. Okay. And if the employer has not paid you, let's say your month finishes and you never went on leave and maybe for six, 10 months or so, you have accumulated 20 days and your employment finishes, at the time we are leaving, because you never took any leave, those 20 days or 24 days in a year will be paid off. So there is a formula that we will have uh, enough time to talk about the, those uh, formulas and all, whatnot in terms of annual leave and so yeah. on. So there is also maternity leave uh, where employees can benefit the female employees. There is, usual, there is a Mother's Day for female employees. There is a paternity leave. So there are all these type, type of benefits that uh, the law has provided now. Um, the, um, I think in the coming mm -hmm. episodes, we'll try and see how we can go into those things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the various questions that have come in terms of um, those who are asking, like we've done uh, off air, we'll try and uh, follow up and uh, find a way to, to uh, link them with the relevant authorities to look into, into those matters. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you have made mention of all these types of leave and paternity leave. Yes. I know we've run out of time, but paternity leave, what type of leave is that? So that is a leave that is given to uh, a male employee. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Why? <laughs> so if you, if you qualify for paternity leave, you're given about five days. What that means is that those days should be taken uh, by a male employee to go and be with a family. Okay, so, so, if, so if you don't have a family, if you're not a husband or a father, you don't qualify. The law simply says you should, prov you should prove that you are the father to the child. It does not say mm -hmm. you have to prove who the wife is. Okay. It simply says prove that you are the father to that child. Interesting, because so, I know a lot of men didn't know that there's actually paternity leave. Yes, paternity. Interesting. At least there's so, a balance, because I always felt the law favors the women more. Yes. But I'm glad to know that there's paternity leave. I can't wait for us to just dissect each and every one of these leaves in yeah, detail. Definitely. Yeah. And on that note, we've come to the end of today's episode. Unless you have anything else to say, Mr. Kavanda? No, it's just to uh, thank the viewers uh, for all the feedback and all the questions that they, they've been sending. Mm -hmm. um, we might not cover all the things uh, during our sessions, but uh, um, you should know that there are more episodes that are coming. So yeah. if you're Questions are not being answered now. Definitely, we'll find time to, to answer them at a later stage. Um, and also, for those who might want to, please just follow us on uh, all our social media platforms on, on, on uh, LinkedIn, on TikTok, and uh, Facebook. Interesting. Um, like I said, we don't take calls, we only take messages. Um, Mr. Kawanda, my spirit has told me to read this one last message. Maybe you could be the help that they need. Um, please help us from Chico over the minimum wage since the government declaration nothing has happened. Since the government declaration nothing has happened. Good afternoon, a big thanks to KBN TV and Mr. Owen. You are helping a lot of people with your labor matter. I pray that this continues. Thank you. Tell him thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we do have beautiful feedback coming through from you viewers. I wish I could read each and every message that you're bringing in, but unfortunately we cannot. But be rest assured that Mr. Kalanda does take every one of your messages very seriously and he does try to respond to those that he can respond to, those that the Labour office has to respond to. He submits those to Labour offices. Um, join us next week. Same time and the same channel if you would want to understand your job better. We have an interesting conversation and topic next week as well, so please make a date, all right? On that note, please thank you so much for joining us and don't go anywhere because I do have Conard that is coming through with Rumor Has It. After that, we do have the Gospel Corner and many other interesting uh, programs right here on KBN. Stay tuned. <laughs>